Shalom. Hello again. Well, here we are at the real beginning of the series Israel by Divine Right. This has been a long while in the making, I can tell you. Uh, we went to some, some extra trouble. We went on location, of course. There's new music with words that you'll be hearing as the shows go on. Um, and some very, very fine production values, some fascinating personalities. We went on all sides of this question. We talked with rabbis, with Palestinians, with journalists, with uh, Bedouins. Uh, Gosh, uh, and, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, theological representatives of this question, the Jews in Israel. It, it really started last spring with this um, issue of Christianity Today. Uh, I don't take that magazine, I sure never would, but it uh, covered what it calls Christian Zionism and pretended that the idea of the Jews in Israel or Israel being important in prophecy is, is just the idea of, of a few uh, crazy teachers, I guess, and, and not a very popular idea. You know, I, I don't know how, there, there are people reading this Bible who think that the Jews have no right to Israel. And uh, if you can f tell me how you can have those two positions, that is, read this book and its promises to uh, the chosen people about the promised land, and still hold that, that they shouldn't have the land somehow, or not worthy of the land, or whatever, I'd like to know how you figure that out. I'd like to hear about that. Um, anyway, the uh, the teachers that they named, uh, I, I'm proud to be a member of the group. Please include me. Uh, it reminds me of in World War II when uh, Hitler put out a list of composers' music who you could not play, uh, and he listed the Jewish composers of uh, Germany, uh, uh, Schoenberg, Weber, and Berg, uh, uh, geniuses all, um, uh, Smith and, uh, and so on. Uh, gosh, uh, Bartok wrote in a letter demanding. He said, I'm a Gentile, but you dare not leave me off that list. He wanted to be included. I want to be included in the crazy teachers that think the Jews are supposed to get Israel. And as a matter of fact, they're there now in fulfillment of end times prophecy, okay, or the beginning of end times prophecy. Uh, teachers like Hal Lindsey, Dave Hunt, Dave Breeze, uh, Tom McCall, who's on our program, please count me in with them. I'm a wild-eyed, mm, crazy, pre-tribulation, pre-millennial believer in Scripture. Uh, we made this series, too, because of uh, odd theologies like replacement theology and kingdom now and these mindless ideas that come down the road. The church is now Israel and so on. Junk. I won't refute it again, okay? And because of anti-Semitism in general. Uh, unbelievers are going to be anti-Semitic. Scripture says that. The Lord says, ye shall be hated of all nations to, to Israelite disciples, and, and I think that's what he meant. Um, this is not for believers. That's not for you. It's not for me. When you line up with the king of the Jews, then you learn to love the Jews. You sure don't hate the Jews because Almighty God said, I will curse him that curseth thee to Abraham and his seed. Uh, and I guess we made it because, you know what, I love Israel. And uh, I want you to love Israel too. We're going together there for a thousand years. That's where the kingdom's going to be. Okay. Now, Dr. McCall is with us tonight, uh, my dear friend, and he's been with us many times before. Thomas S. McCall is, uh, holds a doctorate in Old Testament studies, and uh, we used him on location. We needed two men to cover the amount of locations we did. We'll start at the beginning where God promised Abraham this wonderful land at Shechem. Well, here we are where the entire business of the promised land began, at Shechem. That's the town that lies in the valley between these two mountains. We're on Mount Gerizim, and in the distance is Mount Ebal, and Shechem lies in the valley between the two. We read that Abraham stopped here, the first place he stopped when he came into the land. And in Genesis 12, 6 and 7, the scripture states, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, 
under the oak of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. So this is the place where God first made the promise of the land to Abraham and his seed. And he just stopped here overnight, as it were, heard that great promise from the Lord and continued on southward, ultimately, to Beersheba, where he lived. Now, to locate this area of Shechem on a map, this is uh, a description of what uh, the land looked like about the time of Abraham, when he first came to this area. He came from the north and came down to this area, which is Shechem, between the two mountains that we already mentioned, and then headed on down to Beersheba, where he lived. To get an idea of what that looks like in the modern map of Israel, we see that the west bank is this dotted area, and Shechem is right in the heart of what is known as Samaria. And uh, that is where Abraham stopped on his trek into the promised land. So we're right in the heart of the West Bank area, uh, the area that is now occupied predominantly by Arabs, but there are Jewish settlements all around. Even on this mountain, there is the Jewish settlement of Bracha, which means blessing. and. Uh, so this area is dotted with Jewish settlements along with a large Arab population. Now continuing on with what happened in this area at later time, we understand that Abraham moved on down to Beersheba and then of course later after that the Hebrew people moved into Egypt and they were there for 400 years. After that, Moses brought them out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the Sinai Desert and ultimately up close to the Jordan River. One of his last instructions to Joshua in Deuteronomy 11 was to go into the land and as soon as Joshua brought his troops into the land, they were to come to this location, to Mount Gerizim and Ebal, and there pronounce the blessings and the cursings of the law of Moses. So we read that Joshua was, was obedient to that command from Moses. And as soon as they conquered uh, Jericho and Ai, they came straight to this area. And Joshua says he put half of the people, something like a million people, over there on Ebal. And the other half of the people were here on Gerizim. And the ones on Gerizim were to pronounce the blessings of God upon those who kept the law. And those who were on Ebal were to pronounce the curses of the, upon those who disobeyed the Lord. And can you imagine the great antiphonal sound that came from this natural amphitheater? as a million Israelites read the Word of God on one side and a million read the Word of God on this side. This was the Mount of Blessing. And so it is called Brucha today and the Jewish settlement that is uh, not far from here is called Brucha. In a way, that's, that's the method that Joshua used to claim the very land that God had promised to Abraham. They were coming back and taking the land, and conquering the land, and possessing the land that God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob centuries before. This area is also known in the scriptures for additional things. In the New Testament times, when our Lord Jesus uh, lived in the area, at one time he said he must needs go through Samaria, and he came to the town of Sychar. That also is a little town in this very valley. And there he talked with the woman at the well, demonstrated to her that he was the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world and the one who possessed the water 
of life. So this area is full of meaning to anyone who believes the scriptures from the time of Abraham through the time of Joshua to the time of our Lord Jesus and demonstrates the faithful promise of God concerning the land of Israel. If you travel to the Holy Land just once in your lifetime, let it be with Zola Levitt. Zola has been touring the Bible lands for almost 20 years. His knowledge of the land and understanding of its people mean an outstanding pilgrimage for you. Journey through the Holy Land with Zola Levitt and experience the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. For the tour of this lifetime, write Zola, Box 12268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. Not too far from Shechem, in the West Bank, there is a settlement named Kafar Idomim. Many of the people who live here do so for biblical reasons. I talked to the spiritual leader of this community, Rabbi Reuben Grodner, about God, about Abraham, and about the everlasting covenant. Well, Rabbi, we're in a, uh, a very historic and biblical spot. Can you orient us a little bit? You're right, Zola. This is one of the most uh, important and most beautiful sites in all of Israel because just a few miles from us we can actually see the very spot where the Jewish people the children of Israel stood some 3500 years ago on the other side of the Jordan River waiting to cross over into the promised land it was in that valley that God spoke to Moses and told him to appoint Joshua to lead the people across the Jordan. And there they came to the city of Jericho. I see it, I think. Uh, there, there, beyond the ridge, the green, the trees, and the houses, that is the city of Jericho. Uh -huh. And that was the first, the very beginnings of the Jewish establishment of a Jewish state here in the promised land of God. Mm -hmm. Now Moses was not privileged to do what you and I are doing right now, mm -hmm. to stand on this soil. All that he was able to do was to go to the top of Mount Nebo and look over and see the beautiful land. But he had that pleasure, and we have the privilege of being here today, standing in the land that was promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. So uh, Moses came there to these uh, mountains of Moab and of course he brought the children of Israel here because he was very conscious of the uh, covenant God made with his father Abraham. And I would like to talk about that land covenant. Here we have in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 17, and God says to Abraham, Maybe you could give us the Hebrew and hear the authentic Genesis 17, 8. Uh, Beginning, I'll go back to Genesis 17:4. All right. Ani briti tach. I make with you. Uh, my covenant I establish with you. Vehayita av hamon goyim. You shall be the father of a multitude of peoples. Velo yikareo de shimcha Avram, vayashimcha Avraham, ki av hamon goyim netaticha. Your name shall no longer be Abram, but Abraham, meaning the father of a multitude of nations. And I will multiply you very much, and kings shall come forth from you. And we know the great kings of Israel, David and Solomon and many others. And then God says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and all your children after you, for all future generations, for an eternal covenant, to be unto you a God and to your children after you. This covenant of the land that was made between God and Abraham was not a covenant of the past. It is a covenant of the present and a covenant of the future. You read Berit Olam. Berit Olam, an everlasting, an eternal covenant. And I shall give v'natati lecha u'lezaracha acharecha et eretz migurecha et kol eretz Canaan. I shall give you the entire land of Canaan, not a part of it, <laughs> not a piece of it, 
not to be given away to others. This is your land, all of it. La chuzat olam. Again, we hear the word olam, eternal, forever, an eternal inheritance. And I shall be your God. And, and we're standing here on the West Bank, so obviously you're not in favor of giving any of this away. This is the heartland of the Jewish people. Judea, to the north, Samaria, this is where our forefathers tread. When we hike in these hills, we follow the footsteps of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And that is our land. Not the land of others, but this is our homeland. No human being wants to give away his home to anybody. And we, the chosen people, do not want to give one inch of our land to anyone else. This is the land promised to us by God. So in your view, the return of the Jewish people to the land is a fulfillment of prophecy. Indeed, Zola. All of the prophets said that there will come a time when the Jewish people, after a long period of exile, will return to their land. They will return home. As I mentioned to you earlier, when I open Ezekiel 37, and I read the lines of the Valley of the Dry Bones. Please read uh, the scripture for us in Hebrew. It, it, it gives a wonderful authenticity to what we're talking about. Here we have in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, the most beautiful, most poignant prophecy that speaks to us today. Vayomer Eli ben Adam. And he said unto me, says the prophet, O son of man, Ha'atzamot ha'ele kol beit Yisrael heima. This valley of dry bones that you witness, this is the house of Israel. You say that our bones are dried up. We are lost. We have no future. But I say to you that you have a future. Because out of the ashes of Auschwitz, out of the bones of the crematoria, I will give you back your land the land that I promised to you. I will take you out of your graves and I will bring you back to your land, to the land of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I give my spirit into you and place you upon your land. Here you have a prophecy of Ezekiel some 2,500 years ago that we are witnessing today with our own eyes. From out of the Holocaust came the state of Israel. From out of this barren desert, we have a beautiful community. Trees, flowers, grass, children growing and prospering in this desert, a desert that was promised to us by God so many years ago. Mm. Did you choose this, uh, this spot for a, a particular reason? Uh, it's amazing what you've done with it. We chose this spot, Zola, because it was a piece of land that was crying out and saying, come to me. Come to me, my children. I am barren. I am bereft. I am lost. I want you to bring life to me. And so we came to this empty desert Nobody lived here. This, is, this was empty wasteland. And we reclaimed the soil and we redeemed the soil and we're bringing it back to life. And I believe that the mountains around us that you see that are desolate and barren will someday be populated with communities such as ours, such as Kfar Dumim, with Jewish communities sprouting up all over and perhaps Christian communities as well. People all over the world who want to live here in this land of the Bible, in the heartland of the Jewish people, and the land will be redeemed. And, and in your view, there will come a great day when Christians are welcome from the nations to join the Jews here to worship the, the Lord? The prophets tell us that the haviotim el harkochi, the simachtim beveit tfilati, ki beiti beit tfila yikare lechol haamim, my house shall be a house of prayer for all the nations of the world. And Isaiah says in chapter 2 that, that all the nations will stream unto you like a river. 
people from all over the world will come to to feel the presence of God in this Jewish land. You see this happening in uh, some future messianic age. I believe with a perfect faith that we are today standing on the threshold of the coming of the Messiah. The Talmud tells us that if you want a sure sign that the Messiah is soon to come, wait for this prophecy to be fulfilled. And this too is a prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 36 when he says, But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they will soon be coming. Vatem hare Yisrael, an pechem titenu, ufer yechem tisu laami Yisrael, ki kervu lavo. When we see this soil bringing forth fruit, trees, flowers, life, that is the surest sign that the Messiah is near. Well, that was the Song of Abraham, and uh, I had said before we're going to have music uh, with lyrics on this uh, series relevant to the message, and I hope you'll enjoy that. Uh, the singer was Dan Beam when he sang on the uh, Unto the Gentile series. People wrote in and said, who was that wonderful singer? And he's, he's a church singer here in Dallas. Dan is uh, just gifted with a beautiful voice and a wonderful way of uh, putting across uh, that kind of music. Now, this rabbi, uh, he's something interesting to Christian people. Some people aren't aware that uh, a person can uh, read the Old Testament, respect it as the Word of God, as, as Scripture, of course, as the rabbi does, but not read the New Testament, not receive the Messiah. He's in, by no means a, 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 a believer in, in Christ. He, uh, he would uh, consider that uh, irrelevant. Uh, he, he is a reader of the Old Testament, a believer in the Jews in the land. And we thought it was well worth uh, speaking to someone who, in effect, laid his life on the line. 
and uh, and the lives of his community. I don't mean somebody will come and kill them, but life is hard out there. He's an American. I'm sure that he has uh, lived better than on that hillside, on that edge of that desert. And uh, they're putting their money where their mouth is, so to say. They are what Menachem Begin, the former prime minister, called facts. They're on the ground, living on the land, so it is Jewish land as far as they're concerned. Our future programs will develop this land covenant right on through the patriarchs. Uh, Isaac, not Ishmael. Jacob, not Esau. That is what the scripture says. Uh, on through Moses and uh, Joshua and, and right on through. Each one on an appropriate location where he was, Joshua, Jericho, and so on. Um, I want you to uh, watch each program because it is a continuous thing. The land covenant is something developed through time, and we are seeing it even today, of course, being fulfilled, obviously. Um, when the radio program was first played that I referred to at the top of the show, uh, a professor of Old Testament studies said on there why uh, these people could conceivably be driven off the land. Uh, that to me is, is uh, unscriptural. Uh, God indicates he will bring the, the uh, chosen people back to the land once and they will remain. He'll not remove them again, Amos 9, 14, and 15. He, uh, he is their God, they are his people, etc. It would be absurd to think that God is playing a game of back and forth with the chosen people. There are four million Jews here in the land. That's a record for all time, including David and Solomon's time. So we have to take that very seriously. Uh, the tapes of that original talk show and of the Equal Time program with Dr. McCall and I are available to you. Two radio tapes, professionally made and, and very clear, and I think you will uh, like these messages. They're very relevant to the series. Twelve dollars, please, for the two uh, cassette tapes, uh, just right for the anti-Israel tapes. We will put in our Levitt letter and catalog. There's no charge for those if you'll order these tapes. So anti-Israel tapes and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Israel by the word of Jehovah Israel by the will of the Lord Israel Oh.